Hello and welcome to Production Bytes. I'm your host, Veronova, and today I'm going to be continuing from last episode, covering digital audio and how it works. So firstly, the method of capturing a waveform I described in the previous video actually has a name, which is PCM, or Pulse Code Modulation. It's the basis for all audio formats, and when stored raw, as a WAV or AF file for instance, is what's known as lossless audio. I'm going to talk more about audio formats another time, however. A question some of you may have asked after the last video is what is bitrate and what does that represent? Bitrate simply describes the amount of data audio uses per second, and is directly derived from the bit depth and sampling rate. Bit depth is represented in bits per second, and those of you who know your maths will be able to work this out yourself, but I'll break it down. To find the number of bits per second in audio, you simply multiply the number of bits per sample with the number of samples per second. So 16-bit 44.1 kHz audio would be 16 multiplied by 44.1, which is 705.6 kilobits per second. The kilo just represents a thousand, and that makes calculations like this a bit simpler because you're using smaller numbers this way. Also remember that this is per audio stream, so 705.6 kilobits per second is the bitrate for a mono 16-bit 44.1 kHz PCM file. If it's a stereo file, you need to double the value because it has two audio streams. So this makes 16-bit 44.1 kHz stereo PCM audio 1411.2 kilobits per second. You can work out the size of the whole audio file just by multiplying the bits per second by the number of seconds in the file. But overall, bitrate isn't that useful when you're talking about PCM audio, as you tend to work with the specific variables here. However, when you start converting PCM audio into compressed audio formats, it's a useful way to tell you how compressed the file is, and becomes a good indicator of the audio quality. Something I didn't mention when talking about bit depth in 101 was audio quantization. Quantization, of course, is a term used to describe moving something to its nearest point inside a set resolution or grid. And that's what bit depth provides, with 16 bits having over 65,000 points in its grid, and 24 bits having over 16 million. A real-world waveform is converted to a digital one by measuring the waveform's amplitude and finding the nearest bit value to its amplitude at the point of sampling. Because real-world sound's dynamic range doesn't rely on a grid, a waveform could be halfway between two digital values at the time of sampling. So to remedy this, it's quantized to the nearest bit value, and this is bit quantization. Likewise, this also happens when you want to convert between bit depths. Since 16-bit has a much lower resolution than 24-bit, the waveform has to be requantized to a much smaller number of bits. And this is done by interpolating the waveform and then resampling it using the new bit depth. Something which ties in closely with audio quantization is dithering. I'm going to keep this fairly simple as there's loads of detail and hard maths you can go into, but it's actually a fairly easy to understand concept. Dithering is simply the addition of very low level noise to the digital audio. This is done because quantizing audio to a fixed bit depth and then reinterpolating it can cause quantization errors which makes audio sound grainy. This was a bigger problem back in the early days of digital equipment, but is still a technique we use today to make up for cheap digital to analog converters. Dithering also has the effect of masking the flutter caused by a very quiet or fading sound jumping between a small bit value and zero. One of the most important things I missed out in 101 is why we use the sampling rates we do. Why do we use 44.1 kHz as the main consumer standard? Well, this is due to the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem, or just Nyquist's theorem. This theorem was laid out long before digital equipment even existed, and is really important in digital audio. The theorem basically lays out a simple rule for sampling rate to avoid aliasing. The rule is that the rate of sampling must be at least double the rate of the highest frequency which is going to be sampled. This is known as the Nyquist frequency. So with 44.1 kHz audio, the highest frequency before you get aliasing is 22.05 kHz. If a frequency is above 22.05 kHz, then you start to get aliasing. 
which is where the sample points stop being interpolated to the correct frequency and instead start to form a very low frequency. The higher the original frequency should be, the higher the frequency produced by aliasing will be. 44.1 kHz is fine for consumer audio because we can't hear above about 20 kHz anyway, so an anti-aliasing filter is always applied to the audio, cutting off all frequencies above the Nyquist frequency. This way you get perfect reproduction of the original sound without aliasing. So despite the depth I've gone into with these videos, I still haven't covered everything to do with digital audio and it's a very vast subject, but I have tried to cover everything which you're likely to come across in everyday life and even go a bit further just for geekiness. But that is it for this episode. I hope it's helped you in some way and as always please like, comment and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions or requests for future tutorials and videos, then head over to our Facebook page and leave a comment suggesting them. Until next time.